Hello everyone and welcome back to this case review, a video more or less meant for bridging the gap until I finally get my hands on one of those Nvidia RTX graphics cards I want, as well as AMD's Ryzen 5000 CPUs and maybe even AMD RX 6000 GPUs. Today we are therefore taking a look at the so-called new Antec DF600 flux case, one that comes with a quote new end quote airflow approach meaning a couple of things have been done differently in this particular PC case, if you will, to basically optimize airflow. Now besides functionality, there also is some ARGB lighting on here too, after all it's marketed as a gaming case. Nonetheless, we don't have to shell out a whole lot of money for it, since at the time of making this video, the DF600 Flux goes for about 75 US dollars, which admittedly is pretty much the sweet spot for a mid-tower to many of us consumers. Now to get your attention, let me tell you right away, Antec already ships this thing with 5 pre-installed fans. Well that's nice and all, but is this case any good or is there something you should look out for in particular? Besides our usual screws and whatnot, Antec kindly also decided to include a magnetic dust filter for the front and nicely tied up for shipping a so-called reverse fan which you'd plant onto the PSU shroud, more on that later. Let's talk a bit about the design, the aesthetics. What can I say, it does not meet my personal taste as some of you long time watchers may have expected to hear from me right away. But this of course doesn't mean there aren't people out there that like this kind of look, it's still fairly well done. Although I'd like to point out that the side panel as expected is tempered glass, the front on the other hand is not, it's acrylic. Which of course as always is a huge dust magnet and also is prone to scratches. Other than that I really can't complain. Fresh air is drawn in by the 3 pre-installed 120mm fans in the front, that's looking pretty damn good so far. In between the acrylic and fans, there's not even a dust filter, so getting fresh air in should be a relatively easy job for these fans. Now before this case arrived, I had some fears regarding dust filtration in the front. I expected it to come without a filter, which luckily is not the case at all. So if you have the desire to somewhat limit dust buildup inside your system, you can easily make use of that included magnetic dust filter and attach it to the front. On the top of the case we also happen to get a classic magnetic dust filter, as well as a removable one on the bottom for our power supply, looking all good so far. A bit unusual are those ventilation slits on the steel side panel. For that one we also get a magnetic dust filter. So some air certainly can also be drawn in from here into the system thanks to that mounted fan on the PSU shroud that sucks in air from the PSU chamber below. This airflow system Antec calls flux, a combination of two words, flow and luxury. It certainly would be perfect if we then additionally also added two or three fans to the top of the case or simply a radiator with those fans, that way the air within the case can be swapped out fairly quickly and efficiently. Besides the three pre-installed ARGB fans in the front, there is also a non-illuminated one on the rear, as well as one more that you mount onto the PSU shroud as stated before. Actually there is room for two of such fans. In terms of radiator support, in the front we can mount up to a 360 or 280mm radiator, albeit attention should be paid to the thickness. With the stock configuration with the fans being installed outside of the front panel, the max thickness allowed here is 55mm. If the fans are mounted on the inside of the panel, then we are talking of just 30mm of thickness. Up to a 360 or 280mm radiator can also be mounted to the top. Installing that radiator was child's play since the mounting holes were moved slightly sideways to not interfere with the motherboard's heatsink. That's what I like seeing, hopefully this will become a standard someday. Other than that, when glancing over to the specs, the DF600 Flux makes a mighty fine impression especially when considering the price tag of just $75. Neither high CPU coolers nor long graphics cards should cause any issues, even though I would still watch out in terms of GPUs since there are some models out there that can get almost excessively long. Where the manufacturer has decided to save some costs is, they left out rubber grommets completely and in terms of front IO, USB wise, things are looking rather scarce. 
furthermore in some non-critical parts of the case, and Tech decided to cut down a bit on the thickness of the steel. Nonetheless, if you're asking me, they've made a great choice on where to save some money, so it doesn't drag down the whole case, leading to a fairly good overall build quality. Oh, and there's a cutout hole on the side of the PSU shroud to showcase one's glorious power supply. Well, that is if you don't happen to be one of those people that skimp on the PSU. What's not an option at all is vertical graphics card mounting, but it's not that big of a deal, really. At least it shouldn't be. Now, how many hard drives and SSDs do actually fit inside this DF600 Flux? Well, at first glance, I have totally underestimated the amount this case can take. A bit later, I have noticed that even more mechanical hard drives and SSDs do fit in here than what I've initially thought and shown you. Not just two SSDs at their usual mounting points, but another spot further to the left. And similar story with 3.5 HDDs. You not only can mount one to the back of the motherboard tray, so to speak, and not just a single hard drive in the hard drive cage, as I've initially thought, but another one directly on top of the cage. By the way, the HDD cage can be removed altogether. So clearly, in terms of storage, this is a pretty flexible case, especially at its price range. But that's not even all. Onboard also happens to be a fan slash ARGB hub slash controller. The controller aspect, however, only applying to the ARGB side of things. Two 3-pin fans, or rather one can be connected to that hub after having assembled the system. ARGB headers we initially get three to work with. Those of you that don't want or simply cannot control the lighting via the motherboard, simply sacrifice the case's reset button. On default, in theory, there is no reset button on here. Instead, that button acts as an LED button to switch between colors and effects. Unfortunately, I had to learn to accept the fact that the connected fans to the hub in no way can be controlled, meaning they're operating at a constant 12 volts. So we are miles away from a silence-oriented system. The fans are really loud, they're running at constant max RPM, no matter if idle or full load. The fact that there's neither a controller on board inside or on the case, nor any PWM function, I honestly find to be very disappointing that's a pretty outdated way of doing it. Aside from that, my usual pretty standard test system fits fairly nicely into this DF600 Flux. The airflow does in fact appear to be a whole lot better than in many other cases of this price bracket, even though I don't have any solid proof and data to back up my claims. Cable management potential is okay. I'm clearly once again displaying my impatience for that aspect of PC building. To summarize, the Antec DF600 Flux for its price offers a bunch of neat functionality, also equipped with five usable fans more or less right out of the box, and we also get an interesting, slightly more thought through airflow system for once, which many other cases, even more expensive ones on the market, simply don't have. Aesthetically, it's certainly not my cup of tea, but it's entirely subjective and a matter of preference at the end of the day, therefore no deduction of points there. However, I have some criticism here for the DF600 Flux, one of which is a pretty serious one. The acrylic front, it attracts lots of dust and is prone to scratches. In some parts there's thinner steel used and the case lacks rubber grommets. Where I see a fairly huge issue is noise levels. The fans themselves are fine, but the lack of fan control leads to a constant 12 volt operation. I simply can't understand how a manufacturer such as Antic could miss or simply neglect something like that. Aside from bothersome fan noise levels, the rest of the case actually does a remarkably good job. It's just a shame the noise levels drag this case down so much, so the final ratings are a mixed bag. You definitely would have to take care about fan control on your own. If we were to ignore that major drawback, the Antic DF600 Flux, at a price of about $75, would be one really strong candidate. With that said, stay well everyone, and thanks so much for watching.